Welcome to this week's IGC events webinar focus on geothermal, which is presented by Think Geoenergy and Enerchange. My name is Jochen Schneider. I'm the director of Enerchange. I'm glad to welcome today Florian Heberle from the University of Bayreuth in Germany and you everywhere in the world to another Friday Energy Talk. Florian Heberle will speak about environmental evaluation of a geothermal power plant in the southern German Molaspesen by a life cycle analysis. Florian Heberle graduated at the University of Bayreuth in environmental engineering. In his PhD, he focused in power plant technology with the topic of his thesis analysis regarding the use of a zeotropic fluid mixture in organic Rankine cycles for geothermal applications. During his PhD, he was already employed as a scientific assistant and later as a senior research associate at the chair of engineering, thermodynamics and transport processes of the University of Bayreuth. In 2017, he became also Managing Director at the Center of Energy Technologies at the University of Bayreuth and is also Coordinator of the Tau Graduate School Energy Efficient Buildings. In his talk today, he will introduce a recent publication and study that explores the binary plant of Kirchstockach located in southern Germany in a comprehensive life cycle analysis. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Schneider, for the kind introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity to give the speech here in this webinar. You already uh, mentioned the title, so um, let me also thank uh, my co-authors, which were participating in uh, this uh, study, Mrs. Meenberg from the KIT and Mr. Bott and Professor Bayer from the University of Halle. So we did a lot of studies regarding binary cycle for geothermal boundary conditions in Germany and also um, in other locations um, regarding the uh, different power plant concepts, for example, working fluids for the binary cycle, mainly um, or C cycles, to look at the optimization regarding the efficiency. So in this case here, the second law efficiency. But also we are looking at the economics. So what's about different concepts, for example, pure power generation, or CHP concepts or hybrid cycles, for example, solar thermal together with geothermal or biogas uh, power plants together with geothermal power plants. But there's a third aspect which has to be considered um, regarding the realization of uh, geothermal power plants, and this is the social acceptance. One step forward regarding the social acceptance could be the proof of, of sustainability of um, your renewable um, resource. And in case of geothermal applications and in case of other renewable energies, this can be done by the life cycle analysis. We did a life cycle inventory for a real geothermal power plant in the south of Germany according to well-known standards. On this base case, we um, performed uh, different scenario analysis for selected parameters of the power plant. And then finally, we compared these results for the real power plant to other studies existing in literature, which are mainly theoretical, so generic analysis. So we had the chance um, to get project-specific data for the power plant in Kirchstockach. So this is um, a binary power plant located in the southern German Molassebessen. So Kirchstockach is located near Munich. So here you can see the map of, of Germany right above. We are here in the southeast of Bavaria. So here is Munich. And you can see about 16 um, geothermal plants or energy systems here, which cover heat production from 2 to 40 megawatt thermal power. Um, on the other hand, we also have cogeneration plants with here the green triangles. And we also have a power plants which just generates electricity. And one of these is Kerstocker, uh, which is located here. So one of the suburbs of uh, Munich. So this power plant is in operation from, from Google Maps, for example, we can see here the uh, two uh, air-cooled condensers of the binary power plant. You can see the pipes of the geothermal circuit, and these components are mainly dedicated to the ORC, 
So this one, for example, is the storage tank. On the picture on the left, you can see it here. Um, the storage tank for the um, working fluid of the binary cycle. I will come back to this later. And uh, here you can see some uh, heat exchangers. And in the building, for example, the turbine is located with a generator. Regarding the specification of this power plant, let's come back to, to this slide. You can see here two different air-cooled condensers. So this is um, because we have here a so-called double-stage organic Rankine cycle. This means we have two modules which are quite similar, and one is operating at high temperatures. High temperature, that means you have a temperature of about 100 degrees Celsius at the inlet of the turbine, and the cycle consists of the main components, the pump, the heat exchangers, which are coupled to the geothermal heat source and evaporate the, the organic um, fluid. And then it's entered into the turbine, expands in the turbine, and is liquefied in the condenser and the cycle is closed. And the same we have for the low temperature module. Here we have an inlet temperature at the turbine of about 75 degrees Celsius. And the main components are quite similar to, to the uh, high temperature module. Uh, here you can see in green the geothermal um, resource or geothermal fluid, which is coupled in the heat exchangers um, to the ORC. And electricity is generated here at the generator, which is coupled to both um, turbines. At ambient temperature, so this is the design case, a nominal power of the um, power plant is 5.5 uh, megawatt electrical power. The data of the geothermal resource coming from the production well is 138 degrees Celsius and 120 kilograms per second mass flow. For both, for the low temperature as well as for the high temperature ORC module, we have a fluorinated hydrocarbon, so a refrigerant um, here as working fluid, and this is um, our 245FA. This has a relevant global warming potential of 1050. So this is uh, getting important uh, later on in the life cycle analysis. So please remember this regarding the working fluid. Okay, um, when we do the life cycle inventory or the life cycle analysis, um, this includes all the materials and energy flows. And we do it uh, according to this scheme. So here you can see the inputs the life cycle stages we considered and the outputs. For the inputs, uh, mainly we uh, have to consider the electricity for the drilling. So this is electrical drilling procedure. We have to consider all the materials and processes, um, for example, for um, casing the drilling um, and also for the surface components of the energy system, mainly heat exchangers, uh, turbine pump. Of course, we have to consider the auxiliary energy. So uh, yeah, I give you some examples later. The life cycle stages, we have, according to the standards, three main um, life cycle stages, the construction, the operation, and the decommissioning. The construction phase, we divide it into subsurface, so mainly to the exploration of the geothermal source and into um, the construction of the surface um, components, so mainly the binary cycle, the ORC. The outputs are, of course, the electricity, and we also considered um, refrigerant leakages um, in this study, and uh, another output is the disposal, so the recycling. Regarding the electricity, it's uh, important to mention that uh, the functional unit of this life cycle analysis is the one kilowatt hour electrical uh, electrical output yeah. For To give you some examples um, regarding plant specific data or information, I want to show you here um, these red ones. Um, for example, we have here a, a doublet for the wells and both wells have together a depth of 8,664 meters and the drilling days were counted um, to 182 days. Um, we also consider for the materials, for example, the length of the casing and for the auxiliary energy, this is also important um, for the analysis. We have to consider on the one side the, the electricity, which is needed for the fans of the air-cooled condensers, 
but also for the ORC pumps and on the other side um, for the downhole pumps uh, which are needed in the southern German Molassebessen. To the outputs, we, according to the information of the operator, we have here a plant specific um, leakage rate which is considered in the base case as 1% um, per, per year of the filled amount um, of refrigerant uh, in, in the plant. And the electricity generated by uh, uh, in one year is uh, about 40 gigawatt uh, hours, um, according to about um, 7,600 uh, operating hours per year. So all these data, all these uh, specific plant data, we obtained from the information of the operator. So thanks again to the Stadtwerke in Munich. Um, so here we have the information regarding the drilling days and, and the casing. And according to this information, we obtained the plant specific data regarding, for, for example, the materials. So here the steel, um, with uh, which we calculated um, in the amount per meter um, borehole depth. For all these uh, data, we um, considered uncertainty in our analysis. And of course, uh, the same was done, for example, for the energy. Um, balance. When we go to the surface, so the binary cycle, and uh, look at the plant specific data, we analyzed based on data sheets um, the heat exchangers according to their materials. These are the air cooled condensers, the evaporators, the preheaters, and also the turbines. And we also have the information about the filling of the plant with the refrigerant, in our case, as I said, R245FA. And this is uh, 70 tons uh, in this case. Uh, we also analyze the plant building according um, to the energy input and to the material input, and in this case, concrete. And for the operation, as I said, we have plant specific data regarding the refrigerant leakage. Um, this is 1% per year, but we want to analyze this in more detail. So we did a scenario um, analysis um, for the leakage. And also, of course, we have to fill in um, this amount which uh, is leaked, uh, so we have to also consider the, the makeup of this leakage. Let's come to the results. We have here um, the selected impact categories we want to analyze. So the global warming, the non-renewable energy, the acidification and the eutrophication. In blue you see yeah, the, the shares which um, are related to the construction of the subsurface, so the drilling and the casing and so on, and of the surface in green, with the, they are related to the ORC plant, and in red, this is the operation stage, and you see the decommissioning has very little uh, influence on the results. So let's have a look at the global warming. So in total, we have 43.5 grams CO2 equivalent um, per kilowatt hour that we obtain. Um, this is for the base case. As I said, um, functional unit is one kilowatt hour electrical. Uh, the leakage rate is 1%, per, 1 and the lifetime which was considered for this study is 30 years. And we see for the global warming, the main share is related to the refrigerant direct. This means is related to the leakage rate of this fluorinated hydrocarbon with a high global warming potential. Uh, you can see here the, the refrigerant makeup. Um, for the other categories, uh, non-renewable energy, acidification, eutrophication, the green and um, blue shares, um, they are relevant for up to 90% of the emissions. So there the construction phase dominates um, the emissions and of course, for example, for the non-renewable energy, you have a high share of the uh, electricity which is needed for the drilling, and which is yeah, accounted here according to the electricity, to the emissions of the electricity mix in the year 2012 in Germany, where the drilling um, was performed. Starting from the base case, let's come to the scenarios. You can see here a high share regarding the um, leakages, uh, regarding the global warming. So let's have a look what, is, um, what are the results if we uh, vary the leakage rate. 
up to the worst case of 5%. And if we use another um, refrigerant like R134A, which is also fluorinated and has also has an global warming potential of 1,300. So you can see uh, global warming is about um, 200 grams CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. So this is really a significant decrease, but still it's relatively low compared to the present um, electricity mix uh, in Germany. So for the electricity mix in Germany in the year 2019, we have 400 um, grams CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour, just to mention that. So still the worst case is, is uh, significantly below the electricity mix in Germany. If we use a new synthetic refrigerant um, like R1223ZD with a global warming potential of seven, the same effect we would see for uh, natural hydrocarbons like isobutane or um, isopentane, then you can see the um, global warming is always below 25 uh, grams CO2 per kilowatt hour, also for high leakage rates. So this is also uh, illustrated here on the right side. You can see that the emissions uh, which are related from the refrigerant and its leakage, they are significantly decreasing um, when you use um, a refrigerant with a low GWP. Another scenario we look at, which is really important, is the electricity supply. So we need electricity in case of Kostokach, uh, in for the drilling and also, of course, for the auxiliary energy. So for the ORC air condensers, for the ORC pumps, and also for the downhole pumps. In the base case, we looked at um, the, the, the case that we supplied the drilling um, by the, the net. So we considered the um, emissions of the electricity mix in Germany, but um, for the auxiliary energy, this was allocated um, by the generated electricity of the geothermal power plant. So if we do, and then we, we come to the result of the base case of 43.5 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour. If we do a full allocation, that means that we also allocate the electricity needs um, here in dark blue for the drilling energy by the generated um, energy of or electricity of the power plant, then this uh, value can be decreased slightly uh, to 39 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour. But if we uh, consider no allocation, this means that the auxiliary energy is also um, supplied by the electricity net in Germany, then of course you or the impact factor global warming is decreasing roughly and we have um, 219 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour. But please keep in mind, this is strongly dependent on the present electricity mix. For the study, we um, considered an electricity mix of the year 2016. And um, already now, um, the emissions of the electricity mix to 2020 is decreasing sharply in Germany because of high shares of renewable energy in the electricity mix. So it's um, for further analysis, we want to do here some um, scenarios for future um, electricity mix with uh, increasing shares of renewables in the, in the German network. So we see the same um, effects, of course, for all the um, considered impact categories, so for non-renewable energy, for eutrophication or acidification, um, in case of full allocation, slightly decreasing values or emissions, and of course in case of no allocation and significant increase. Last but not least, we also looked um, or we compared the results for this life cycle analysis, which is um, related to a real power plant to mainly generic theoretical analysis. So one which is uh, well known and um, yeah, strongly related to the German boundary conditions uh, by Frick shows similar values. So 
um, for Kirchstocker, we have um, a decrease of, of the global warming or of the global warming. Um, in spite Frick et al, they don't um, consider leakages, for example. So um, the decrease is due to electric drilling and also to lower material needs in on the binary cycle. Regarding a generic study we did in the past, we received also um, lower values because here we also have higher emissions due to the drilling and, and due to all the components materials. Um, if we compare it to hydrothermal system with higher temperatures, which are not um, related to, to Germany, um, of course, these studies here, they all come to, to lower values because they consider higher temperatures, um, higher than 150 degrees Celsius of the geothermal source, and they also have um, uh, um, considered shallower um, depth of, of the drilling. So um, the, the maximum depth is here, uh, two kilometers uh, in, for these studies here. Just to, to get also an, an expression about the enhanced geothermal systems, the, they are differing, um, but they are in the same range regarding our study. And this is due, due also to the similarity to the boundary conditions because um, here similar depths and, and also binary cycles are considered for the EGS systems. And the same picture you can see in fact for the non-renewable energy and also for the other impact categories. I don't want to go into detail there. So let's conclude. Um, we did a life cycle inventory for the power plant Kirchstockach. It is a real power plant and we investigated um, several scenarios um, on the impact of selected key factors. One of these key factors is for sure the, the used refrigerant. And uh, we, we did the scenario analysis um, regarding the leakage rate, but also the use of the refrigerant. And we can see if we use a, a low GWP um, working fluid like R1223 set D, this offers a great potential to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions um, of geothermal power plants, um, which are or which uh, have an, a binary cycle. On the other hand, of course, the construction phase of the plant is another key aspect due to the high energy and material consumption for drilling. Regarding the allocating um, regime, we see that fully allocating the energy needs of the construction and operating phase by the self-produced outputs. Um, this offers, of course, the greatest environmental benefits in all impact categories. Okay, and finally, a comparison um, with similar studies demonstrate that also leakages of refrigerants are included in this study. Um, a considerably less environmental impact is generated. Um, this is mainly due to the uh, electrical source uh, for the drilling. So, short outlook I want to present. So, we want to do an implementation of more detailed models, for example, the refrigerant makeup. There we have some uh, used some similarities from R245FA to R134A. There we want to go a little bit into detail. Then further scenarios, for example, to um, vary the full load hours and see the influence on the greenhouse gas emissions. And one main concept we want to, to look at is next to the uh, pure electricity generation, you can see here by this double stage RC, we want also to look at um, an additional heat generation, so combined heat and power, and what's the effect um, then on the um, emissions. And then uh, last step, a, a generalized conclusion um, regarding hydrothermal resources. So thank you for your attention. And of course, thank you for the funding by the Bavarian State Ministry of Science and Art in the framework um, of the project uh, Geothermal Alliance Bavaria. And last but not least, um, uh, thanks to the Stadtwerke Munich for the comprehensive provision of the project specific data. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this great presentation with, with very interesting results. Um, the presentation is now open for discussion. 
Just let me conclude uh, again. Kirch Stockach has a CO2 emission of 43 gram uh, per kilowatt hour, actually, with the existing refrigerant. And it can be reduced to 70 gram with an alternative refrigerant. Is this right? Yeah, this is right. When we look at the, the study and this alternative um, refrigerant, like this one here, we already considered that uh, according to present studies, this refrigerant, if we do it really like a drop-in solution, so we take the same power plant and just change the uh, working fluid, this would lead to a slightly lower efficiency, but of course to lower emissions due to the um, leakage rate. And then, yes, we, we would here come in total to emissions of 20 grams CO2 Per kilowatt hour if we use this uh, alternative refrigerant. And this uh, zero 017 grams are related to the alternative refrigerant? Yeah, this um, 0.17 grams, this is um, perhaps this is a little bit misleading. Look at the um, emissions due to the refrigerant leakage. Then in case of the, the base case of R245FA, we would have 26.6 grams. Um, per kilowatt hour, so just for the just for the leakage, and in case of this working fluid, it's it's neglectable. We have some questions. Thank you for your presentation. Page fourteen. How did you estimate the leakage for different working fluid? How can the leakage rate change with different types of working fluid? The leakage rate is not dependent on the working fluid. We are dealing with um, ORC systems since about 15 years at our institute. And we also have the information about the operator of Kirchstockach that in Kirchstockach, this is because uh, uh, they have a leakage rate of 1% per year. So if you ask other operators, you will always get information about one to 2% um, leakage rate um, per year. So this is, just um, where we are um, regarding existing power plants. And this is also why we choose for the base case 1% leakage rate. And all the other leakage rate are just theoretical um, assumptions to show the influence of the leakage rate. And this is here the worst case scenario. I, I don't think that this is realistic. So we are um, on a realistic manner, we are uh, somewhere here. Thanks. The next question, uh, today the working fluid is still 245 FA? Yeah, it's uh, still and uh, theoretically, or, or it could be also uh, changed to something like that, but uh, to, to, to a modern or, or a new alternative um, refrigerant, but this is um, of course dealing with some risks like uh, the ceilings, for example, if they can be reused and, and so on, and everything is designed for this working fluid. So let's say it like that. I would appreciate a lower global warming with a new refrigerant, but this is then most probably related to a new design, to a new uh, power plant. Why is no allocation part share of other section decreases in emitting CO2? So in this case, in the base case, all the energy needs of the running system, like uh, electricity for the fans, of the air cool condenser, of the ORC pumps, and the downhole pump, are supplied directly by the electricity with it, which is generated by the geothermal power plant. On the other side, at no allocation, these auxiliary energy needs, mainly electricity, is supplied by the German network. So. In 2016, the emissions of the present of the electricity mix is about 600 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour. This is due because in the German um, network we also have, of course, uh, in in the year 2016, um, we have still coal, gas, power plants, and this is why if we supply our auxiliary energy by the network, we have these high values um, for the emission. Very interesting talk. Thank you. Are there any other environmental impacts from the refrigerant? A leakage of 700 kilo per year seems quite high. 
this is uh, quite high. The, the filling amount is, uh, of course, um, seventy tons. This is this is uh, yeah, this is significant, of course. And uh, let's say other influences. Um, of course, there are other influences of the um, leakage. They are going to, for example, for other chemical reactions um, with the environment, and therefore they are also responsible for acidification and oitrification, but you can see this is also negligible. What I want to say is what is important for the 700 kilograms you lose by leakage, you have to fill this again um, into the system to run the power plant um, efficiently. And this is uh, what I want to point out. So for the makeup, so for um, the production of the refrigerant, you also have emissions that you have considered. And this is here in these um, dark red bars. Um, and you can see this leads to, to relevant emissions. So um, here we, we consider the production process um, for this lost uh, or refilled um, refrigerant. Okay, thanks. For the operation stage, do you consider the amount of the geothermal fluids? Not really. Um, so, so this is not uh, considered. Of course, we have considered for the exploration and also stimulation of the geothermal resource. The, the, these um, processes are considered. Um, of course, if the boundary conditions or the, the, the parameters like temperature and um, mass flow of the geothermal source leads to a certain power output of the binary cycle so this there is a dependency but other things like scaling and using uh, or, or, or to clean the scaling for example we, we did not consider it yet to answer this thanks the next question will the change of refrigerant from r134a to r1223cd apart from reducing efficiency would it increase the cost you have to consider that um, the, the general ones which are used at the moment 1234a and 245fa they are in europe um, they are not banned but there is a um, uh, there is a phase down um, of, of this. Um, so the amount of, of this refrigerant, which can be yearly bring in, brought into the market, is reduced um, by the governments. And so the price is uh, increasing. So there will be a compromise. Um, in future, it will not uh, make economic sense to use this because they are um, so expensive. So I think it will go to these uh, new modern refrigerants and also to the natural hydrocarbons like isobutane, propane, or isopentane. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Did you consider that ORC equipment's size could be slightly different regarding the working fluids? Yeah, this is um, a good point. This was done here um, by a, a simplified approach. So as you see, um, for the global warming, um, the construction on the surface so this is the binary cycle and if you look here for the steel so the heat exchangers and so on this has a relatively low um, share of the um, global warming so therefore for a simplified approach we um, set this value as constant for all the um, for, for these scenario analyzers but if we want to go as on the last slide i showed more into detail this is something which has to be considered. This is right. Yeah. Thanks for this event. My question is about using the supercritical CO2 as working fluid in ORC. Yeah, it, it's an interesting um, opportunity because from the env environmental view, we have an, an global warming potential of one for CO2. And supercritical CO2, it's always um, just the question how to deal with high pressures. Um, the pressures in, in the ORC are relatively low, so the, the component, so we come a little bit more into the economics, so the component costs are a little bit less for the ORC. And um, another 
aspect I want to mention regarding CO2, um, with the supercritical cycle, you have normally uh, a high cooling of the geothermal water. What I mean is that you have um, reinjection temperatures which are quietly low. So depending on the salinity and so on of the geothermal water, it might come to, to scalings. But this uh, has to be answered uh, plant specifically or, or case specifically. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's an opportunity for low temperature applications, uh, supercritical CO2. Thanks. What plant lifespan do you consider for the calculations? In general, 30 uh, years are considered. Of course, uh, if we, for example, go to the CHP units, um, we can also consider, for example, different um, lifetimes and if we go also for more detailed models, we want to go also there a little bit in more detail. For example, for the downhole pumps, we want to vary or we want to 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 sharpen our um, study so that we uh, consider their lower lifetimes. But here, in general, 30 years uh, were assumed, and in in future work, we want to um, make a more diverse um approach so that we uh, do this for for um different components in a different manner yeah yeah okay the next i think it's a comment i think uh, the geothermal resource is effective indirectly at the heat exchanger it dictates the better effectiveness i think this is a comment to uh, the question amount of thermal water in the system this affects a lot. Um, as you said, it, it, it affects the filling amount of the working fluid. And also, if you look at, at this um, plant scheme, so this is a very complex um, scheme. There are also um, concepts which are more simplified and they would lead to another um, result concerning the env environmental impact. So this is what why we have to consider more and more life cycle analysis um, because this is just one case and and this could be for a one stage um, cycle with isopentane the result could be significantly different yeah okay thanks um here is another question why does the subsurface co2 increase for the new refrigerant relative to the other refrigerants yeah, this is um, due to the to the uh, lower efficiency um, of the refrigerant. So there, uh, we would need um, a higher. Um, um, so this is why the, the share of the um, surface is increasing because we would need um, bigger components. But um, for this question, to be honest, I have to look into the public or in our data in more detail. But it's a good question. Thanks. There is another question. Could you give some details about aquatic acidification and eutrophication? Yeah. Um, so, to to in the production, for example, of concrete or steel, um, there are processes which uh, lead to SO2 or SO2 equivalents, and they have to consider in the life cycle analysis. And um, for example, as you can see here, we have um, for the production of the um, refrigerant, um, yeah, production processes which had to be considered according to effects to the environment, which lead to an acidic acidification of the environment, and the same for the eutrophication. And um, for example, we also have. Um, at the stimulation, um, we use acid to, to 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 stimulate the source, and we have to recycle it, for example. And and this is why um, these effects can be also or or are can be seen here um, according to the calculation of the acidification. Thanks. Um, another question. Besides leakage, do you face refrigerant pollution, which affect electricity production efficiency? For example, um, 
we, we ask this also the operator and and uh, it's it's such effects are not seen in in the cycle so um, and also if you have leakage there is no chemical reaction or the chemical reaction with the environment or with the ambient air they are neglectable this can be relevant if you have um, for example high temperature applications of ORC they're really the the, the, the working fluids like siloxanes they can uh, have chemical reactions um, with the ambient air but at, at these low temperature applications I'm not um, aware that this is relevant. Okay we come now to more general questions. A uh, very interesting presentation. How does this compare to the CO2 footprint of electricity from a standard gas powered plant? How about wind or solar? We did this uh, comparison too. So wind has, in fact, but but this is also, yeah, I also comment this in a general um, manner. As I said, this is always one case that we analyzed here and in, in another scenario or in another place, this can be quite different. But to the, the results are um, reliable and, and can be compared. Wind, for example, shows in general a lower global warming. So I, I focus now on the global warming. Um, and solar, we are, um, we are, in fact, the the there are studies which shows um, that we are in the range of solar systems or even lower. Um, than solar system PV systems uh, regarding the global warming. So this is what I know uh, regarding the gas, um, the gas plants. Um, yeah, they are about um, 400 to 500 grams um, CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. Okay, thanks. Here is another question. How many plants in Germany still using HFCs? with high global warming potential and is there a plan to shift to lower global warming solutions? Um, the exact number I don't know but there are about four or five which are all built up at the same year so 2012 to 2014 they have all these HFC so the, the, the fluorinated hydrocarbons um, they are all, also other ones like um, Grünwald, they use isobutane or even Kalina cycle, which are now set in operation using ammonia water. So you can already see a clear shift to, to such low GVP, uh, GWP um, solutions. Um, as I said before, from the operator side, of course, it's I think there are too many risks to, to change the running um, uh, plans and, and to make it with a drop-in solution. So this is, uh, of course, just a theoretical study of us to, to show the, the influence um, of the use of different refrigerants. So a change in during the running system, I, I think, cannot be expected. You, do you know what uh, the Holzkirchen plant and, and the just inaugurated Garching plant uh, is using? Um, I think Holzkirchen is going to be, a, as far as I know, I think it's also isobutane, so, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, probably you're right. Okay, um, here is another question. What is the difference of the successful geothermal project and environmental assessment of Kirchstockach to Taufkirchen? It's just five kilometers of distance and the geological conditions might be very similar. Is the success related geology and drilling or to plant technology? So, Mr. Schneider, can you help me to, to answer this uh, uh, question? Because I'm not so familiar with the project in, in Taupe. Well, the, the one is um, an, an ORC plant and the other one is a Kalina plant. And oh. geology is... I think more or less the same. Of course, um, in general, despite of the uh, or, or in fact, normally our results are transferable to other plants in the, in this area. Of course, as I mentioned, you have to consider the different working fluids. And as Mr. Schneider said, if there is a ammonia water, then um, 
the leakages are not relevant. Um, perhaps you have a little bit more um, influence on, on, on things with um, acidification or eutrophication due to ammonia. Um, and uh, But I would expect similar results, uh, but as I said before, not regarding the, the, the working fluid. This, this, this is the main key issue. Um, and But we can also see that already um, 20 or 30 or 40 kilometers in the south, you, if you go more and more into the south of, of Munich, you have to drill much deeper. So this can be also something which changes. So no, I, I think, think they are just the same. They are also okay. about the temperature. It's more or less the same. I think okay. both are about 130 degrees. Okay, then then it's it's uh, then it's mainly due to the binary cycle than the yes. differences. But uh, I think n neither you nor me can can say anything about ammonia water uh, origin. Who delivered it? No. no. Yeah. Okay, there is another question. Hello, if the resource are nearby to a populated zone, how about the noise? Just shortly, um, it's always so. So the main main thing is um, the air cool condenser, um, which can influence um, uh, here or which have an, an impact on, on noise. Um, this is why they have here something like walls or, or um, some protection against the noise but so far this is not a problem in, in social acceptance for example so far i know but i think it's far away from the village in the end yeah yeah in the life cycle analysis also the noise is considered no this is uh this is not considered but there are approaches to to also implement su such uh yeah such uh, aspects like noise yeah okay then thank you very much this was in the end the last question okay thank you very much I, yes it was a very interesting presentation especially regarding the refrigerants i i really did not know that they have such a large impact on on the whole system of a lca but um yes very very interesting results I thank all the participants for the questions they had uh, within this webinar. We will now shortly introduce the next webinar. It will be after the Easter holiday in two weeks. It will be again an English webinar and it will be by GA Drilling. And it will be about the technology of plasma bit drilling. So looking forward uh, to welcome you again for the next webinar and would be glad if you can join it and i wish everyone a very nice weekend and a nice easter holiday and stay healthy bye bye